Wie dat je naar het werk kan gaan. Of course, I didn't have this color camouflage in that day. I covered myself well. August 2nd, 1492. Did I tell you his name? No. Have you gone home? <laughs> Jorge Augusto reporting. <laughs> Christopher Columbus and the crew of the Enterprise set sail for Japan <laughs> and islands in between today. At a dockside photo opportunity, the captain told the press, this is our mission, to seek out new worlds and new world orders, to expand the Spanish sphere of influence, to make the safe, world safe for Christianity, and to put an end to pre-Columbian artifacts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that press goes out loud. At the urging of Ferdinand and Isabella, Pope Alexander VI has drawn a line of demarcation just west of the Azores, separating the spheres of influence of Spain and Portugal. No sooner did the United Papal Service declare the whole than Portugal's King John, acting on a tip that Brazil was about to be discovered, moved to push the line over a thousand miles west. The Brazilians have declined to comment until being discovered. <laughs> October 20th, 1493. Christopher Columbus held a press conference in the Bahamas today and declared the New World Order at hand. But rumors continue to circulate that Columbus altered ship's laws to give himself credit for sighting land first. His defenders say he is a national hero, it's a dangerous world out there, and sometimes you have to go above the written law. <laughs> Asked by a reporter for a small left-wing monthly, rumored to be funded by the Turks, about charges that he had fomented genocide, the admiral conceded that his arrival in these lands had coincided with some collateral He noted that, quote, unfortunately we had to destroy the hemisphere in order to save it. <laughs> in court, the queen expressed confidence in Columbus, adding the Spanish people want to get on with the business of slaving souls. Excuse me, uh, selling the slaves. <laughs> this has been Jorge Arbusto reporting from the Bahamas to be thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a wonderful program lined up for you tonight. We're going to have a speaker on the uh, environment and clear cut all your questions for you. And <laughs> after that, we might have some, uh, some entertainment for you. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to have a mandatory uh, intermission at this time. We're encouraged to get up, stand up. Not to, you know, for your rights or anything like that, but <laughs> we do want to feel free to buy everything in sight. And uh, for that purpose, we have a free market sector right there. We have uh, many things to enjoy purchasing. We have the usual table with their propaganda from the committees and all that, and then we have my table with the, the information. <laughs> and all the different things you can get there, the books and tapes and buttons and so forth, because this is America and we have choices here. Uh, I'm not saying alternatives, but we have choices. Uh, well, not for the ladies, but I mean in general. <laughs> now, my mailing list, uh, well, you're all on all day. <laughs> but it's nice to get your comments. These comments are very important to me. They help me to tune the presentation a little bit. Uh, let me give you one example I got from a student out in our great uh, Southwest out uh, here, which used to be something else that's great northeast, but that's the uh, point. point uh, inspiring. You know, I didn't know that, but there are a lot of things I didn't know. This will surprise you, but I didn't. Well, let's take the Gulf War for an example. How did our oil get under Kuwait? No one knows. <laughs> and, uh, well, give an example close to home. Uh, the, uh, it's now generally known that the, the, there are four, five, 500 members of the Fortune 500, this is declassified now, and uh, some 535 members of the, the U.S. Congress. Now, who do those extra 35 people represent? No one knows. <laughs>
Ohio State. But uh, for any, for any technology that you have to offer, we well, much appreciate it. And I'd like to close uh, uh, this. Uh, there was a mention earlier, I think, in the news uh, section about the opening of the files. And I'd like to say so many people felt obliged to go to see that film. JFK film, and, and, and I understand that urge because, in general, it is the law, that, as I understand it, that you must see all the new films. But in this case, I felt that it was such a blatant rewrite of history, and uh, the original rewrite was really quite sufficient. That means <laughs> all the expense and the But in the spirit of the times and of the film, I'd like to close this section with uh, perhaps uh, a quote from a man himself been heard before, but always worth repeating. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do to someone else's country. Let's say for yeah. <laughs>
lot. There's a lot. It's going to cost a lot. So put a lot of money in, and this is really going to make a big difference. Um, you know, he mentioned earlier the, uh, that George fellow that we had here earlier about Dan Quayle. When I was down there two years ago, Dan Quayle was down there with the uh, uh, generals of the Salvadoran Army. And there are only like one or two because like there are 300,000 colonels in the Salvadoran Army. And he had a flamethrower out and he's like holding it like this, like he's really cool. And he had all these Salvadoran generals laughing their ass off because he had it pointed the wrong way. <laughs> this is what's it wouldn't be prudent. Not enough information there, Dan. Should have went to Nam, cannot play hooky back home. Gonna try to educate him about the military. Gonna send him through some of these intensive training courses down there in Central America. It's good for Americans. They're all Americans, they're all our people, really. So what I wanna do here is uh, mention our next guest just in passing here. Our next guest tonight will be speaking about the environment. He's a moderate clear cutter and a former consultant to the Environmental Prevention Agency, one of my favorites, good, good, environment, bad, trees, pollution. Please welcome, if you would, Mr. George Stuck.
But in the short run, you're just going to see a rise in wine, cool, no sales. Unless the earthquakes get there too. Does that answer your question? Yes. You see, you've got to be concerned about the long run. Don't let solve these problems in the long run. You see, because the short run is, is for creating them, if you understand what I mean. In the long run, the global war is going to be canceled out by the nuclear winter, which is very important to remember. Yes, over here. Uh, yeah, as being a lobbyist, how much uh, money did you give George Bush at his recent fundraiser? Well, money is not an environmental question. <laughs> in fact, money is not a question, it's an answer. <laughs> you take one more, we have time. Oh, yes, go ahead. What, what is your company going to get into after you cut down all the trees? Well, we get, we're not going to cut down on trees. That's a misconception. Trees, I don't know if you know this, but trees are a resource. They're, they're like people. They're, they're there to be cut down. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. I went out west. I had never been there. And I was surprised how much I liked it out there. All of those trees, of course, a forest. I don't know if you know this, but a forest is a place where different species of trees are intercommingled together. So I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. And that's okay. it's, it, that, it saps the strength of the individual races of the trees, you see. So what you need to do is to clear, cut that out just a little bit so you can see what's there and what's the strongest tree that needs to survive. And then you take those rare trees and you put them together in a, in a, in a, in a theme park, you see. So people don't need to walk all over just to find those rare, rare beauties, you see. Now, this is, a, well, for example, America, Florida. And of course, George Bush, that's a theme park. And, uh, and, and I agree, there'd be a lot of criticism of that, and I agree, yeah, there's not enough rides out there. But George Bush, <laughs> George Bush came here, so, and he wanted to make sure there's a lot of bushes in there, and of course they did. But his things have changed. Why, in old days, they didn't let the bush there, fella. It's a Disneyland thing. <laughs> but when I went out west, I found that I was driving along and looking up at that beautiful, ancient, magnificent, standing lumber that they have out there that's just rotting on the stump like it does, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was